live from sunny Singapore. It's the ultimate blockchain show across the interweb. This is Rock the Block Live. And here's your host, Eugene Tate. What's up, Crypto <laughs> Universe? Hey, uh, we're back here live again on Rock the Block Live, 8 p.m. with me, Eugene Tay, your host, and uh, we have a very special guest today, K. Wu from Amble. It's NVL. That's a uh, little M here. Yeah, right here. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what Amble does is these guys are the uh, right sharing uh, solution on the blockchain. And what's really interesting that I'm very fascinated about. Is it's zero percent commission, whereas the competitors are all charging percentage of the drivers mm. and are you know trying to make a little bit off from their own customers technically. So I was very curious, how can you run a business charging <laughs> nothing to your to your well, uh, assets, right? Yep. I mean basically like this is like same question whenever I explain Embol, yeah. everybody asks the same question. How do you survive yeah. if you don't charge any commission, if you don't charge any you know, profit? Yeah. So the basically, we all know that blockchain works without profit. Yeah. So it's like token economy comes in when we talk about business model, but it's not just only because of a uh, uh, token economy, but also there's other business element that we can add. Mm. So for example, uh, they already been doing like other giants, uh, working with uh, rental companies or other car makers. Mm. So that kind of business sentiment can come into this business, so that we can actually forward those business opportunity to those rental company. We can mm. also take commission from them, not the drivers. Drivers like they need to work really hard. Yeah. They need to get rewarded, but you know that we can make com like profit from other side. Yeah. So that's how we're gonna do it. But also. We don't want to go with a like a like deep talking about token economy. People already know about the, what the token economy is, and whenever we explain this token economy to general public, yeah. they say that's bullshit, <laughs> right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. So, well, I don't want to go f over with the token economy, but that's uh, I would say that's another sentiment yeah. that we can use it as a sustain our business. Yeah. Because I've seen how your token economics work and the whole structure work and. And it makes sense to people who are in the crypto scene. Mm. But what you're trying to put forth to the community is very much a, a solution that you don't need to go up there and shout and scream. It's blockchain. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would say like 99% of your customer base, the drivers, the passengers, mm -hmm. they don't care. So, yeah, actually, like we call them emblems. So we don't even use the terms of blockchain. And uh, whenever we talk about opportunity, of driving and participating in this uh, protocol, yeah. we don't explain to them blockchain. Blockchain does not need to be explained to them because mm -hmm. it's too complicated sometimes. And I would uh, rather choose the way uh, to deliver of benefits mm -hmm. that they can get. So two clear message to the drivers. For first one is like zero commission. You don't need to sacrifice your income. Mm -hmm. And second is that you can get incentive by driving it. Now, why this is something you guys should pay attention to is anytime you hear the word blockchain, people who are from the mainstream audience go, either they are curious, they don't believe in it, but those who believe in it goes, you can put anything on a blockchain and it will be successful. And why I even got you here today because I want to talk about the business mindset of running a business. Okay. Being blockchain or e-commerce or anything. You can do so without shouting blockchain. In fact, these days, if I hear things like decentralized, immutable, a blockchain, I'm like, is that all that you have to say to me? Because I'm not hearing the solution at all. True enough. So, so like when we talk about like a blockchain and the business together, and I would explain it as a blockchain is going to be a, the layer behind of it. Mm -hmm. So at actually the user interface and user experience will be the same, mm -hmm. exactly the same. It's like, can you imagine the situation that like, let's say 10 years ago, mm -hmm. cloud was introduced by that. Yeah. Back then, mm -hmm. everybody was crazy. This is a technology that can change the world, <laughs> yeah. right? Do you think the people still talking about it? No. But we are all using it right now, yeah. like Grab, Uber, any services. Facebook, we're using all cloud yeah. service. 
Because the root, the, the root of it all is you are doing a business. Yeah. And maybe cloud, internet, yeah. before the time of internet, mm. it's all about business. Exactly. It's all about the people. Exactly. And you are going out there with that message. Yes. And I understand that I, I, I thought that you guys were the first, but you told me, nope, there are other players around. Um, they didn't make it. In, in your opinion, why do you think sets you apart o- away from the rest of the competition? So uh, I would say it's, it's, it's all mixed up with uh, how they approach of, uh, their execution of business and how they deliver the product is also matters. So let's say, uh, and also the location of the service and mm. the timing and everything is mixed up together. But when we talk about like blockchain and token economy, people are like really preoccupied to talking only that about mm. like how much token that you can earn, how much token that you can deliver to other uh, you know other side of your business yeah. but they actually neglecting to say that that what kind of benefit like what mm. kind of business benefit they, mm. they are getting like drivers will get and also the customer will get so for example let's say we are explaining too much about blockchain that so let's say Eugene you need yeah. to drive with us and if you drive with us you will get let's say thousand emble Wow. Which is worth ten thousand US dollar. Wow! Would you drive for me? Yeah. <laughs> what? No. <laughs> actually, real interaction. Actually, they say, "What is Ambo? <laughs> I don't care about yeah. those. I need a real money to sustain myself. Yeah. That's their reaction. You can't. You can't use Ambo to pay for a bowl of noodle. <laughs> the other thing is, now that you brought that up, do you think? Again, this is there's no right and wrong. I just want to get your your thoughts on mm-hmm. this. Um, Viewers at home, if you guys are watching us live now, uh, please do leave a comment for us. Uh, Kay and myself would love to reply to you. We want to know your thoughts um, because it pertains to you guys. You guys are the main culprit. I'm pointing it out. Do you think that the businesses who are trying to pander to the crowd of wanting, this is driven by greed. They want to put their money in our projects that promises them the, the moon and the Lambos, right? <laughs> Yes. And you find businesses trying to go out of the way to fulfill that narrative. And by doing so, they sort of neglected their base focus of running business. That's right, yes. And then when you cannot fulfill the promise of that 30% or 100%, <laughs> yes. you're going to appear to be a failure, even though you have a good product. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Yep. What are you? What are your thoughts on that? Well, so I have uh, uh, one friend who told me that uh, ICO actually he he felt this is like a politician election. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> says that I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, and please, you know, give me your vote. It's like a you know election, right? Mm-hmm. ICO is the same. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. Please tip your money in, right? <laughs> and all and like. We see that whether they uh, kept the promise or not. Yeah. But, but most times. <laughs> it's like politics. If you guys have been looking at politics all your life, you know, exactly. right? But we still, we still fall for it. Yep. Isn't it a bit like relationship? Yeah, oh, yeah. similar, in, similar. And see you, bring you up for dinner. But, you know? you know, you think about the case that, for example, the president election. Yeah. So those like uh, congressmen and senators, they went through that and then they go to the next level. Mm. I think it will be the same for the blockchain project. Yeah. They went through the ICO and then they got funded and they promised that they're going to deliver the product, they're going to do this. Yeah. So if they don't do it, they will be dismissed. All right, and, yeah. right? and if they deliver the product, then they will be able to go to the next level. Mm. So that is why we are really, really focusing on deliver the f- product as soon as possible. Yeah. Yeah, actually, the, the product right now is is you talk about proof of concept. Nobody believes in your white paper anymore. Yeah. Uh, we we've gone through the two thousand seventeen white paper with uh, China. Oh, you did. Uh, yeah, we, we all had that. Uh, if you had a chance to reinvent the ICO trend, like you are now market leader, mm-hmm. what would you have done differently, or what would you have hoped the community would have done differently? So, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, so. What we did is very, uh, like, we did the way, it's a very traditional way. Actually, we did everything by ourselves. Mm. We didn't spend money to hire those PR agencies. We didn't spend money to 
to uh, hire the community manager. Yeah. We did everything by ourselves. Mm. That's how we can you know, interact with people and also the, those mm. participants, and we can hear more their feedback. Yeah. But interestingly, what I learned uh, from those uh, participants is that there are many different types, but the very general type of those participants was, uh, were like, uh, they're expecting high return yeah. by investing their money into here. And the other part is like, oh, I'm tipping my money in and I'm going to wait until they deliver the product mm. and the, they actually make things happen. Then we can have a good financial return. Mm. But it's like the smaller part of the exactly. pie. Exactly. Yeah. So, but it's, well, I'm not blaming them. It's another way of they can actually support those projects. Mm. And to be able to fulfill those uh, uh, like supporters, we actually need to deliver the product. Yeah. First. Just again, like delivering the product is like, most prominent yeah. thing that you should take care so you said that you did everything in-house mm -hmm. uh, i.e you did everything yourself yes. slash maybe one or two helping hands yes <laughs> how big's your team uh right now um right now about like 30 members oh that's a lot yeah but, right now 30 before the ico it was about 12. <laughs> so you what's your what's your working hours like well i sleep six hours and other than six hours Guess what? Whoa, six hours, that's a luxury. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's You're right. just slacking off. <laughs> yep, that's right, that's right. I'm kind of, I got, I got lousier these days. I used to sleep like four hours, but these days, two more hours. Oh, man, old age, man. I call this old. <laughs> <laughs> so indeed, you travel indeed. around a lot around yes, Asia. Yes. And you're going to set up, you pick Singapore first. Yes. Is there a strategic reason, of reason for that? Of course. It's a very, very specific reason why we picked this Singapore okay. to deliver the product first. Timing. Right now, two big giants has been consolidated together here and then lots and lots of complaint and also <laughs> <laughs> government, uh, government intervention. Mm. It's a perfect timing that we can deliver the product right now, even if we deliver the product, we can fulfill those basic, basic requirement. Mm. I believe that that would be okay. okay. To deliver the first full, uh, basic product to the society and then we bring the value to them. And then we believe that that can actually bring the impact to here. Mm. So we're not aiming to capture a whole market. Yeah. There's no way, no way that we can no do way. it. We don't have that much money, even though all our supporters uh, tip in the, uh, their little money to us, yeah. but we cannot fight against those giants. Mm. So, but what we try to do is to deliver the message. So those participants comes in and they, they actually build the things together. Mm. And then actually we can bring more impact here. So the more believers comes in, the more impact can create it. You see, grab, grab sharing, um, right hailing, all this have all this. I mean, back when grab and Uber were around, mm -hmm. um, there was no brand loyalty at all. Like, no. Whichever comes cheaper, oh, Grab is cheaper now, I take Grab, Uber is cheaper now. So how does Ambo uh, stand out? What's the core message? Is there a story behind that? Ah, that's right. So again, but but I uh, one point is like, okay. there is a brand royalty actually. Yeah. After the consolidation between Grab and Uber, yeah. people actually missing Uber. I was very surprised. Is it because, you know, there's a whole, you miss white is gone mentality. You but don't but it, the thing is that some drivers actually rather uh, say that I would rather uh, drive in taxi if I drive other. What? You know, see, okay, I'm just going to backtrack a little bit mm -hmm. because Uber hit Singapore first before Grab. Mm -hmm. And they were seen as the big villain. And then Grab came in to be like, the, the, I'm the homeboys for the people, right? Yeah. And then that kind of seemed to have, a reverse effect. Yeah. As I, I don't know what happened like in the wrong run of let's say 60 years. But it, interestingly, uh, the treat against the driver is like quite a little bit different between okay. those two giants. And because of that, uh, actually drivers has a little bit more royalty onto mm. the Uber. I thought it, it was due to the uh, big big boy or leader mentality you know when you are right at the top you automatically become the people's enemy and that's why i think was it a hurts was that they had this we did, we are second best and we always try harder yeah yeah and people like that message yeah yeah mm, that's right so, so we, people it's like you know psychologically they support the second place or third player right but the first player will become the public enemy yeah
and I see what you're doing here with Ramble. It's for the people, you know, it's for you guys, you know, the, the drivers, they're not drivers, they're ambulance, you're all friends. Mm -mm. And then you go on with them, no, I'm not fighting any bit, guys, I'm just doing it on my own pace. Exactly. That yep. is the story right there. That's my message, that's my <laughs> message. We don't want to fight against anybody. So if we can work, actually, if we can work with them, yeah. we will work with them. Mm. But if that, you know, cooperation uh, is like, it's going to hurt, you know, the let's say, benefit of those drivers, yeah. we wouldn't do it. Mm. But if we can actually support better by cooperating with those existing players, yeah. why not? So that's the thing. So we're not here mm. to create the profit mm. because, like I said, we don't create profit. Mm. This is not the company like, who's you know, aiming to create huge profit. Yeah. So to bring the impact here and then to change the things, how they interacting with the drivers and the customers. That has been the blockchain philosophy. If you notice a, a lot yeah. of projects, the blockchain philosophy is. is not about making money of you guys, not about making being rich on that one mm -hmm. spectrum, but it's how do we support the community, how do we make this work? Yeah. And then somehow yeah. it, it's it's so hipster, it's so it's so start startup <laughs> mentality. <laughs> it so is, it is. But actually it is really true. Uh, if you don't have that kind of philosophy and uh, you may you will encounter the problem, mm -hmm. the mental breakdown. So what am I doing here? Am I making a profit-making company or am I too greedy to make the money mm -hmm. out of it? Like, it's that kind of question. That but doesn't you, that scare you? I mean, running a business without any... Well, the thing is that right? it's a, my past experience actually helped me to set the, the proper philosophy on mm -hmm. what we are doing. Actually, okay. past four years, we've developed our product in between, starting from Hong Kong and Shenzhen. So we deliver the... Uh, like ride reservation service and we de developed it more with a fleet management system mm. but it's all like a profit making company we took the commission we actually charge a subscription fee to mm. the rental companies but whenever we have a meeting with those uh, counterparty or drivers mm. and the customers or even like you know rental company we need to talk about our profit mm. our cut mm. so the conversation starting actually like you know defense each other. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you make money off me. Yeah. I don't I don't yeah. give you money. Yeah. <laughs> so exactly. That, that's exactly like they and because of that they try to could you lower the, you know, fee or you know, that's the the very very basic, you know, yeah. interaction between, you know, business, right? Mm. But ever since we started this, my stance is like very open stance. Oh, I have this and this and this. Whatever you want, you take it. And how's the reaction like? Uh, yes, reaction is like. Uh, really? <laughs> is, is there any catch? Are you are you scammer or? Do you feel like a bit embarrassed? Like, can I pay you? <laughs> <laughs> some actually somebody actually somebody, I, I can pay you. They said that. Yeah. I was like, oh no no no, it's okay it's okay. So it's a, you, if if you participate in here, that will actually create the value, mm. and then that can help us to sustain, and yeah. that can help us to expand. So that's how we explain, but. All in all, people don't believe it. <laughs> See, that's a, that's a lesson right here, ladies and gentlemen. So the idea is to disarm your target audience <laughs> by giving. Because when you go to a table or transactional and I want to make money off mm -hmm. you, and people know that, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to get that friction and no one wants to exactly. you know, be yeah. in that position of giving. Mm -hmm. But when you are in that, look, I have a solution. I think this is going to help the whole community and the ecosystem get better by your involvement. Yeah. Now that becomes a more inclusive. Exactly. Way. And but then of course that being said, don't be giving free and then like, <laughs> all right, I wonder what I'm doing here. Have a plan, have a business plan because exactly. you guys have a legit exactly, business plan yeah. of how the value is going to come around yep. and it's going to be distributed. That's it's, right. So, so, <laughs> so I have a one example. Yeah. So after the delivery the product of uh, at Singapore yeah. and then next target would be the Vietnamese market so yeah. like around October yeah. and because of that attitude actually we're bringing like bigger company together in Vietnam with us it's not yeah. just by us yeah we're actually so making an not, alliance it's not even competit competitors now it's everyone's just allied exactly, together exactly yeah that's how we're doing again that is a very blockchain philosophy yeah. like you know we, we, we go to events a lot and we meet a lot of people mm -hmm. The scene is just so much collaboration. It's like, oh, what do you need? Oh, let me help you. I know somebody. Yeah, let me, yeah, let me help it's you like up. that. Yeah. Like when we were talking off air just now and you knew what I was trying to do, it's mm -hmm. like, oh, you would like me to hook you up with somebody? Yeah. And that's how we grow. Yeah, yeah. It, it is. Oh, wow. It is. So, like, 
even like those uh, big companies that uh, we've been, you know, having a meeting, mm. actually they, their reaction is the same. Oh, if you give everything away mm. and how are you going to sustain it? It's like, uh, okay, again, this is the same. So I explain everything, what we have, and here's the way that we can grow. So if you want to join us and we can actually help you guys out. So for example, uh, in Singapore, we are making this product under our brand, Emble. But in Vietnam, it's not going to be Emble brand. It could be other brand, other companies brand. Mm -hmm. We are helping them. So, okay, here we have our resources here. You come in and we don't have any problem with your brand, but if we go, it's going to be like powered by Emble. Mm -hmm. But with their brand, we support them to do the business. Hey, you save all the trouble and the time. You're going to back you up with the infrastructure. Yeah, yeah. Go forth and do what you're good at. Yeah, exactly. Oh, oh, this is... This is a lot to learn about business here. In fact, it may be just a, a simple interview about two guys talking, but I'm sure there's a lot of lessons here that young business owners, if you guys are thinking about going to the blockchain, mm -hmm. uh, this very rich philosophy here. Thank you mm -hmm. so much, Kay, for sharing with us. And now before we say goodbye, and uh, I'll see you very soon again. Cause well, it's already 20 minutes <laughs> past the way. Oh, wow, okay. So I didn't even notice. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we want to give you some time, 30 okay. seconds, to sure. shout out to your community. All right, okay. What, any message that you want to tell right. them. Oh, uh, All this, right, this go one. ahead. Okay, this one. This I one, think okay, this go. Is. All right, all right. Emblers, I trust all of you and just wait for me. We have a good news. Uh, actually, third week of this month, and also fourth week this month and also next month we have lots and lots of good news just stay tuned and just trust me and support me all right <laughs> thank you very much Kay. thank you i'm glad to be part of this project and i can't wait for you guys to be right, here that's right this guy is our advisor <laughs> <laughs> wow i i i would be so proud to wear this t-shirt sitting in the anvil uh, car and just yeah, going around talking you will about be. it yeah oh and our plan about the roadshow thing that's still happening. And these guys are the ones who's going to back okay, me up. Okay, gotcha. So, very cool. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching us today. This is Eugene and Kay from Rock the Block Live. I say, see you next week, Wednesday at 8 p.m. Singapore time. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>